ministry-making presence of Jesus that flows out of the church into the world, into the nations. Can I get an amen? And uh, let's just, uh, I'm going to try to break this into three components very quickly. I'm going to speak about the right heart to have the right anointing to be in the river. Then I'm going to speak about what it means to align yourself with what God is doing in the last days. Somebody lift your hands and say, Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers are being raised up by God to establish order in the church. Somebody say order. Now lift your hands again and say, Father, whatever's out of order in my life, restore order. Order to my mind, order to my soul, order to my body, order to my money, order to my marriage, order to my management, order to my manhood, order to my message, order to my mission, order in the ministry in Jesus' name. God hates disorder. Just touch your neighbor and say, God hates disorder. So the second part I'm going to talk about is the, the right order. Because if, if the Bible says order your steps, when your steps are ordered by the Lord, you're walking in an anointed uh, footsteps. Can I get an amen? One place in the Bible says God's footsteps are not known. But I'll tell you something, when you walk with God, your steps become ordered. So there's nowhere that you can go without ordered steps. They're anointed. Can I get an amen? Touch your neighbor, say, order my steps, order my money, order my thinking, order my living. When you have order in your life, there's blessing. When you have disorder, there's chaos. In the Bible, the Bible says in the beginning, God breathed. The Ruach, the breath of God. And he brought order to disorder in the chaos. So I want you to lift your hands right about now and say, Father, there's so much order, disorder and chaos in the world. There's so much chaos in people's lives. Come on, everybody, lift your hands. Say, Lord, would you breathe and bring Ruach, the breath of God. Order. Order my life. Bring order where there's been disorder. Bring apostolic prophetic connection to bring order in the name of Jesus. And then the third part I'm going to speak about is the most glorious part, if I get time. And that is where the river of God the, the, the starts to flow. Now, uh, I've preached in Jakarta, Indonesia. I've preached in one of the biggest churches there where thousands of people came into the service and uh, the Holy Ghost moved with power. The, the choir collapsed. So they didn't know what to do. People were falling all out under the power of God, so they didn't know what to do. And there were 3,000 people waiting at the doors for the next service. The river of God hit. Five services, it was, it went, it was unbelievable. That was what I call Holy Ghost River. Amen. Holy Ghost River brings a Holy Ghost release like you've never seen before. But the reason I mention Indonesia was because some years back we had a tsunami. Who remembers that? And that tsunami brought devastation and destruction. I want you to know this morning there are tsunamis of God. Amen. Lift your hands and say tsunamis of God. Now the tsunami of God is the river. And the Spirit of God revealed to me this morning that there's going to be five tsunamis. So everybody say five. Five tsunamis that will circumnavigate the earth starting around up in 2018. Five tsunamis that will circumnavigate the earth like a river that you no man can stop because they didn't come from man and they don't start with man and they don't end with man. These, these tsunamis will circumnavigate the earth before the return of the Lord. And uh, I see things prophetically because I operate in the prophetic office. But how many of you straight away with your spirit say, that sounds about right? Can I get an amen? That sounds about right for me. How many of you want to be in a tsunami of God? You see, a tsunami that came to Indonesia brought devastation, destruction, heartache, and dis 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 despair. I want you to say this. What the devil meant for harm... God will turn for good. Say, what the devil meant for harm, God will turn for good. That's Genesis chapter 50, verse 30, about the life of Joseph. Now, in every one of our lives, there has been harm. Lift your hands if you know that. What, I want you to say, what the devil meant for harm, God will turn for good. But here's the reality. When God opened the door for Joseph out of that prison door, the night before he was locked in prison, but when the door opened, the prison door opened, I want to speak prophetically to every one of you. In Isaiah chapter 45, the first five verses, God says he's about to open double doors. 
He's about to swing open double doors. When God opens the double door in your life, dear, when he opens the double door, the door will swing open and the tsunami will start to flow. And what the devil meant for harm, God will turn for good. Hallelujah. And I want you to know that I've just come from an incredible river anointing in Bangkok, Thailand. There's a huge river that flows through Thailand. Chi wa wa, chi wa wa river flowing through Bangkok, Thailand. Amen. And you know, for centuries, that place has remained under the dominion of, of, of the Buddhist ideology, uh, which, is, which, is, which, which, which is bondage. Can I get an amen? And for centuries, the enemy has thought that place has been locked up and, and nothing has ever happened. Well, how do you know it's happening? And God has chosen Thailand and he's chosen that place for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost to show what God can do in the earth, to show who the river of God is, to show who the Lord is, because there are millions of Thai, of Thai people turning to the Lord. Amen. From Chinese, they're turning to the Lord by the droves. That place was known as the barrenness, most barren field in the whole of Asia. But have you know, God, God says, you know what? What, God, what men call barren, I'll turn it around and I'll make it fruitful. I'll make a river flow. Who'd like a river to flow in their life? So you know what? Britain's been a pretty hard field. But I prophesy on this message that the, the tsunamis are starting around about now and Britain is going to experience the greatest outpouring of the Holy Ghost in its history. And churches that have been struggling, churches with half empty pews are going to be packed to the rafters. And I, what I saw in Jakarta, what I saw in Thailand, we're going to see it right here in Britain. We're going to see it in the Caribbean. We're going to see it over the nations of the earth because the Lord is coming soon and there is a river. And you're either in it or you're not. Go to Ezekiel. First, let's deal with the heart. Ezekiel chapter 36. And if you, I want you to read the whole of Ezekiel 36. I wish I had time, but I, I do not. Therefore, in verse 5, it says, Therefore says the Lord God, Surely in the fire of jealousy I've spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Edom, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with the spiteful minds to cast it out for prey. Verse, 30, verse 6, Prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel. You see, every time you read the Bible, there's always something prophetic about the nation and the people of Israel, but there's also something prophetic about, about us, the people of God. I want you to lift up your hands and say, I'm not a Jew, naturally. I'm a Gentile who's been grafted in to the purposes of God. So there's always something uh, that God is speaking about prophetically. But there's also something prophetic in the New Testament of us, the people of God. Amen. And how many of you know we should be praying for the nation of Israel? We should be praying for the nation of Israel because... Uh, I don't have time to get into it all, but I want you to know Romans chapter 11 verse 25 says that the fullness of Gentiles might come in. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? That I might turn my attention to Israel. So these are the last days. Somebody say last days. Last days, baby, last days. Which means you, you cannot read the Bible and ignore Bible prophecy without seeing God's hand on the nation of Israel. You cannot read the Bible and not understand that God is saving Gentiles by the millions. He's saving Hindus, Buddhists, Baptists, Muslims by the Hindus. By the millions, by the Hindus. Not by the Hindus, by the millions. He won't save anybody by the Hindus. Look at that. Eradicate that off the message. I'm getting ahead of myself. He's, can I get an amen? Say he's saving Hindus, Buddhists, Baptists, Muslims. Say by the Holy Ghost. Not by the Hindus. Amen. Because it's the last days. He's saving Thai. He's saving Filipino. He's even saving good old British people. Praise the Lord. Why is he doing it? Because God is prophesying of something to come. If you look at history, 1948, Israel became a nation. Look what has happened. That desert has become one of the most fruitful places in the entire world. But the, but the Bible said it would be. God said it would be. The dispersion, they've been dispersed all over the earth. But look how God's brought them back to the homeland. You know, the, 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 the Islamic terrorists would like to tear up history and they don't want anything taught about the Holocaust. Why? Because in the Holocaust you see the, the, the destruction of the Jews. But we know that God's hand is on every nation. Amen. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. 
There's no nation that belongs to Islam. It belongs to God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Now, how many of you are praying for Muslims? We should be lifting our hands and praying for the billion Muslims that God would open their eyes to see Jesus. As I'm speaking to you now, there are visions of Jesus all across the Middle East, all across Somalia, all across Africa. Eyes are opening. Listen, I'm not scared of Islam. Can I get an amen? I'm not scared of every ism under the sun. I'm not scared of humanism, atheism, agnosticism, syncretism. Come on, lift up your hands and say, Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. Jesus is the power. Jesus is the reason for the season. Multitudes are going to be saved in the river of God. In the river of God. Well, watch this. Amen. The Lord says, prophesy concerning the land of Israel to the hills, the valleys. Thus says the Lord, I've spoken in my jealousy and my fury because you've borne the shame of the heathen. Now, I would like to read all of this. Verse 8, but you mountains of Israel, you shall shoot forth. Hallelujah. Come on, say, you mountains of Israel, you shall shoot forth branches and you shall yield fruit to my people Israel for they are at my hand. Can you see this? Oh, there's so much in here. I'll multiply men upon you, house of Israel. I'll multiply. And of the city shall be inhabited. The waste places shall be builded. This is all prophetic. This is Israel today. Verse 11, I will multiply you. Can I get an amen? And so on and so on. But let's go on in the, the whole chapter because <laughs> I, I'd like to spend more time in this, but I cannot because I've got to move on. So I'm just giving you headlines so that you can study it. Now let's come on down and see the heart that God is looking for. Verse 22, Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine. Amen. I want you to lift your hands and say, Everything God does is never for our sakes, but for His. Amen. Because God is not going to be profaned among the heathen. Can I get an amen? Look at this, verse 23. I will sanctify my great name. Somebody say, sanctify my great name. The word sanctify means set it apart. There's only one name, say Yeshua. There's only one name, Jesus. Acts 4.12. There's one name. Come on, say one name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. It ain't Buddha. It ain't Muhammad. It ain't Krishna. It's Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeshua. Jesus. Oh, pro proclaim that name. For I will take you from among the heathen and I will gather you out of all countries. Verse 24, I'll take you from out of the heathen. I'll gather you from all countries. Is this happening right now? Yes. And I will bring you to your own land. Uh -huh. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you. You'll be cleansed from all your filthiness. Amen. Come on, say, Lord, cleanse me from filthiness. Cleanse me from idols. Say, cleanse me from filthiness. Cleanse me from idols. I will cleanse you. You see, before you get the heart for the river, you've got to be cleansed. Amen. Idols have got to be cleansed out of your life. God, strange gods have got to be cleansed out of your life. Can I get an amen? You've got to have a right heart. God will not share his, your, the, the heart with something else. Your, I want you to say, my heart. Say, come on, say, Lord, make my heart an altar of praise, of prayer, of petition, of thanksgiving. Make my heart the altar for the God's river to flow through me into the nations in Jesus' name. Now watch verse 26. Are you ready? Let's do it together. Verse 26. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. Are you ready? Verse 26. Come on, here we go. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit I will put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. Can I get an amen? amen? Can I get an amen? amen? Again, a new heart I'll give you. A new spirit. Come on, lift your hands. Say, Lord, I need a new heart. I need a new spirit. Take away the stony heart of the flesh. You see, what is the stony heart of the flesh? As your hands lifted. I'll give you a heart that feels. The stony heart of the flesh is the heart full of legalism, full of old wine, full of religion, full of re rebellion. We've had folks like that. Thank God they're not here anymore. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? You know why? Because you know what? That heart cannot carry the river. That heart is a religious, hard-hearted, legalistic spirit that cannot carry the new wine. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 9, verse 17, He said, I'm coming to put new wine, but I can't put that new wine into an old wineskin. 
Now, how many of you understand that the spirit of denominationalism is the greatest hindrance to the river of God? And what is a denomination? It is a man-made institution where they erect a monument, something dead, a stone idol, to something that once was a river of God. Just quickly wave and say amen. I don't, I don't have time to develop it, but I want you to understand, God will not put the river, will not put the river anointing into some dead old wineskin. Whether it's Pentecostal Indian or whether it's Pentecostal Caribbean or whether it's charismatic or whatever you want to call it, whatever label it is, if it's a denomination, whether it's VDF or whatever it is or, or MFD or PFD or SGB or, 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 or I'll have some of me, whatever it is, USB, I tell you what, God will, uh, God will not put His anointing of new wine into a dead old wineskin. Call it what you like. Call it glory house or glory brothers or glory Jesus. But I'll tell you, B, glory be to Jesus. God will not pour His Spirit into it. Amen. Come on, lift your hands. Come on. And say, you, we, we have to be in the river. Come on, say, new heart. New spirit. New heart. New spirit. Oh, Shandai, glory be to Jesus. There's a, there's a box there. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. That ankle's healed. Amen. Did you feel that? Hallelujah. Say, come on, say, Lord, I need a new heart. I need a new river. I need a new spirit. Come on, say, new wine is fine. New, new wine is fine. Oh, that, that was a nasty clop on the ankles there. Praise the Lord. That woke me up with a shock, didn't it? Amen. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Look at that. While you're down there, say a prayer, darling. Amen. Amen. Come on, everybody, lift your hands. Say, thank you, Lord. Say, thank you, Lord. New wine. New wine. So to get new wine, you must have a new spirit. If your spirit is caught in the old, the new wine, will not, it, won't, it won't be poured in. Who agrees you need a new heart? New wine, new spirit, new understanding, new zeal. You see, when, you know, when, when, when God awakens your heart, the love for Him is new. It's not like, oh, I've been following Jesus now. 35 years. Oh, oh, praise the Lord. I've been I've been in the same church for 35 years. Oh, I've sat in the same seat for 35 years. I've listened to Pastor Sermons for 35 years. I know what he's going to say next for 35. Whoa, what a terrible place to be at. 35 years I've been here. I've been praying for revival for 35 years. Oh, God, the same. That, how many of you know that's, that is not a new heart? That is not a new spirit. Now, lift your hands if you say, God, I do not want the old. I do not want the old. I want, say, come on, lift your hands. Say, Lord, take the idols out of my heart. Take the legalism out. Take the dead old Christian theology. You see, some, some fools read theology books and then twist their hearts. Come on, lift your hands. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. I, Lord, I don't, want, I, I don't want a dead theologian's uh, Christianity. I don't want a dead Baptist religion. I don't want a dead Pentecostal religion. Come on, lift your hands. Say, I don't want to be in a dead denomination, whether it's Argentina or the Caribbean or whether it's uh, uh, Thailand or wherever it is. In the name of Jesus. Come on, say, in the name. I don't want a dead, a dead, a dead, a dead Pentecostal religion. Say, in the name of, come on, lift your hands. Say, in the name of Jesus. I don't want a dead Pentecostal faith. I want a living, vibrant relationship with Jesus where I wake up every day and I'm like Jesus what are we going to do today that kind of faith come on lift your hands say that kind of faith prays for the sick raises the dead casts out devils has some excitement lives a life of, of joy and victory and purpose amen that's what I saw in Thailand that's what I see here today that's what I know God's going to do can I get an amen? Why? Because when the heart idols are destroyed, three things happen. Write it down. Say restoration. Restoration comes. Restoration. You know what? Sometimes we don't even know what needs to be restored. Sometimes we've lost so much. I've been walking, I've been walking with the Lord 40 years almost. I've been married 25 years to this beautiful woman. It's new. You know what? God, God, God will put new love and revelation in your heart. For him, say for him, for those that you love, your wife, your children. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to be like an, an old wine skin father. You know, like I, I want to love my, my daughter with with the, with with fresh wine skin of a father. Amen. Love my son with more love. Love you with more love. That's love. That's fresh. See, love love is fresh wine. Love is fresh river. 
But stiff and staleness is, well, we've got to do it according to the book, you know. We're British. You know what I'm saying, like, you know what I mean. You've got to do it according to A, B, C. You know what I mean. We've got to do it according to what the, to what the Constitution says. The Pentecostal Constitution says that thou shalt do this and thou shalt do that and thou shalt not do this and thou shalt not do that. Oh, thou shalt shut up. <laughs> Come on, lift your hands. Say, oh, well, you know, wait, according to the Constitution... I don't know about that Steve Mail. He's a little bit on the edge. You know what I'm saying? Like, we've never done it this way before. We've never done it this way before. We've never done it. That's the problem. Those are the seven most famous words of a dying denomination. Let's do it. We've never done it this way before. You see that? Boom. Come on, lift your hands now and say, look, Pastor Steve's not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to hurt people. I'm just trying to help people to get out of that dead, legalistic, old wineskin, that dead theological wineskin that's not working, those dead theological crazy books that you're reading that are messing up your life. And everybody say, lift your hands and say, get on your knees. Get into the river. Get before the cross. Ask the blood of Jesus to wash you clean. Stir up first love again. Stir up first love again. Amen. How many, how many here, how many of your folks are married here? Let me see all those that are married. Who's been married more than 20 years? Danny has. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> to the Lord. Joel's been married more than 20 years. He's only 13. Joel, I need to pray for you, son. First of all, you've done drugs and you're 13. And secondly, you've been married 20 years and you're only 13. <laughs> now, who's been married more than 20 years? You know what? Sometimes you, you, you say, oh, I've been, you know, I've, been, I've, been, I've been married now 25 years with my wife. Oh, yeah, the missus. Oh, praise God, you know. I keep her in the kitchen. I keep it busy. Cook my food. Wash my clothes. Do my ironing. And if I call for cocoa, you know where I am. Who knows that that marriage has got into a rut? How many wives are saying, good preaching, good preaching, good preaching, preach it, pastor. Pretty gospel. Pretty gospel because the man need to hear this. Sometimes the man, the man, the man, the man think he's the king. The man think he's the king. The man think he's the king of the bedroom, the king of the kitchen, the king of the castle. But the man need to know that the man need to treat the wife the right way. Richard's eyes are popping out of his head. You never heard preaching like this. Amen. <laughs> How of you know that's not kingdom? You know what? You know what? When, when, when you're in the kingdom, when you're in the river, you get a fresh love for your wife. Do you know what? I've been, I've been away from my wife eight, nine days. I'm coming back on that plane. My heart's beating like a little child. I'm like, bah, 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 bah. I'm thinking, I'm going to see her again. I'm going to see my kids again. You know what? You know, what's that? What's that? That's first love. Come on, lift your hands. Say, that's first love. That's honeymoon. Come on, lift your hands around about now and say, the river, come on, say, the river is what will keep you on the honeymoon. The river is what will keep you in the fresh place. You know, if you're a Christian husband and you've stopped loving your wife like that, you need to repent and start loving your wife again like you did when you first met her and when nothing was too much and when nothing was, was too much problem. You were, oh, you'd do anything. How many of you remember that? How many women remember that? And now the old boy, well, the old boy, you know, he does what he does, the old boy, you know, the old boy does what he does. Is anyone enjoying my preaching today? Amen. How many of you are single? How many of you are single? You want a marriage like that? You know, while he, while he does what he does, I do what I do. You know what I'm saying? When we, we, said, we said yes to one another on the day and that's it. We said yes and that's it. And I've not changed my mind. I told her I loved her on, on day one. I've not told her since for 40 years, but she knows. Get back in the kitchen, do the cooking, do my ironing. And when I call, give me my cocoa. I'll have my cocoa. Somebody say, what's cocoa? Mind your own business, isn't it? <laughs> Mind your own business. Now, come on, lift your hands and say, that's not, that's not, that's not river. Come on, say, that's not river. That's is, all the single people say, well, you know what? If Jesus is coming soon, I think I'll give that a miss. <laughs> Can I get an amen? Come on, lift your hands. I think if that's what it is, I'll give it a miss. Lift your hands now and say the will of God. The will of God is heaven on earth. Say heaven on earth in marriage. Heaven on earth in money. Heaven on earth in ministry. Heaven on earth in the river. Heaven on, why? Because it's, it's new every morning. They are new every morning. New every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. 
Come on, lift your hands around about now. I'm not trying to be mean. Lift your hands. Say, Father, restore the river anointing. Restore first love. First love for the word. First love for my wife. First love for my children. First love for tithes and offerings. First love for my money. First love for you, Lord. Restore first love to get to church. First love for the kingdom of God. First love to preach the gospel. First love, first love, first love. I want to stay in the river. And if you realize you've got a crusty old wineskin. Oh, yes, you know, I've been in the way now for 45 years. You've got a crusty old Pentecostal wineskin. Oh, praise the Lord. Then it's time to abandon that. It's time to get rid of, get, get, get rid of, because you know what? That new wine cannot go. This river, come on folks, this river, this tsunami is the life-changing, history-making presence of Jesus that'll saturate, the. it'll circumnavigate the earth five times. Then the Lord will come. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Somebody say, restoration, release, and revival. Say, restoration, release, and revival. We are change agents. Society must change when the river comes. It changes business. It changes education. It changes a nation. It changes everything. It changes the media. It changes everything. Why? Because it's revival. When did that last happen in Britain? 1904, the Welsh revival. In 1904, praise God, in the Welsh revival, the power of God fell. It was incredible. It was so powerful that Boyor, they said that the, the, the Welsh mining towns, the pubs and the, and the they closed down, man getting different accents as I'm going, but it will get there in the end. Boyo! And the, the, the donkeys, the donkeys, they were confused, man, because they didn't know what to do. Because after the revival, none of the donkeys would work in the coal mines. Why wouldn't they work? Because they didn't understand kind language. Because these, these dirty, foul-mouthed miners who'd got saved and full of the Holy Ghost who stopped drinking, they did not know how to talk to the donkeys now. So there were no call because they're saying, donkey, please donkey, would you help me? And the donkey's confused. Come on, lift your hands if you understand. So when revival comes, everything changes. Donkeys change. Nations change. People change. Pubs and clubs are shut down. Dead Pentecostalism is over. The river starts to flow and everywhere the river goes brings life. Healing, blessing, deliverance, forgiveness, wholeness. Jump in the river. Jump in the river. We're going to jump in the river. We're going to dance in the river. We're going to sing in the river. But oh no, some of us are like, oh no, 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 no. I only like my ankle depth. I like to be in control. I like to be in control. Huh? Oh no, no, I'll get up to my knees. Oh, I've, I've got my knees. Oh. Ne- uh, hands and fingers, knees and toes, knees and toes. <laughs> me hands and fingers, knees and toes, knees and toes. I'll get up to my waist. But no further than that. Now come on now, behave yourself. That's enough, man. Lift your hands and say, Father, Father when, the comes, when the tsunami comes, I've got to go out beyond a thousand cubits, beyond two thousand cubits. I've got to go out into the depth. I've got to go out into the depth with God where there's nothing that can hold me back, nothing that can hold me down to the, to, the, to the shore of my own ideas, my own theology, my own experience. I've got to go way beyond that to the supernatural river and flow of God. Father, come on, everybody, lift your hand. Say, the Apostle Paul said, I know what it was to come to you in spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Say, Lord, I don't want to live uh, in, in, in my Pentecostal experience. I want to live in the river of God. I also want to go and pray for the sick in the street. See blind eyes, blind eyes open, cripples walk, deaf ears pop open. Let's not glorify some of the people we see on social media. They're just, they're, they're just obeying God. You know what? How about time you started writing your chapter in the book? Come on, lift your hands and say, I'm going to pray for the sick. I'm going to raise the dead. I'm going to see God. Not because it's about you, because it's not about you. It's about God. But it's about high time that God's people stop living secondhand Christian experiences and stop living in dead legalism and start to live in the river start to live in the blessing start to live in the overflow start to live in the tsunami go to psalm 
46, could you? Psalm 46. And around about now, Celeste, if you could play the keyboards to start with. And I'm going to finish this up. Psalm 46. Somebody say, there's a river. There is a river. This river, listen to me, this river, God is going to bring, bring order. Come on, lift your hands around about now. Say, order. order. The Bible says in Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Let's say it together. There is a river. The streams thereof make glad the city of God, the holy place, the tabernacles of the Most High God. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early, play Celeste. The heathen raged and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the ends of the earth. He breaketh the bow, cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted in the heathen, among the heathen. I'll be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Turn to Ezekiel chapter 47. Somebody lift your hand say, river. There's a river. There's a tsunami of the Spirit of God that is coming. It'll bring order where there's been disorder. You know, half the problem with the church is in dead denominationalism. You've got Eli's in the pulpit and Ahab's in the congregation. Lift your hands and say, the Spirit of Jezebel will be cut off in the river of God will be cut off. Men will be restored to governmental headship. Come on, lift your hands. If you're a man, lift your hand around about now and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, restore me to governmental headship. Restore my headship. You see, order will restore what's out of order. And there's so much out of order. But when the river comes, it'll restore. Come on, lift your hand, say restore, realign. How's it going to happen? God's going to restore apostolic fathers back to the body of Christ. He's going to restore them. Why? Because it's order. Ephesians 2.20, the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. 1 Corinthians 12.28, God has set first in the church apostles. Can I get an amen? Before the return of the Lord, there's going to be a restoration. Somebody say restoration, 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 realignment, restoration, realignment. It's going to be so powerful. And it's happening right about now that the tsunamis of God are going to circumnavigate the earth. There will be a restoration of apostolic order, a restoration of signs, wonders and miracles from the book of Acts. Why? Because cessation is a lying doctrine. Somebody say Amen. There's going to be a restoration of worship such as the earth has never seen before. Not little Christian ditties that they sing in church, but I mean worship that takes you to the throne of God, comes from the throne, leads from the throne, goes to the throne. It's throne worship. There's people jumping around in church, but they're not worshipping. There's going to be a restoration of teaching of the Word of God, authority on the Word of God. Listen, God doesn't bless opinions. He never has and He never will. So, well, this is my opinion. Well, you can keep it. God blesses the Word of God. God doesn't change the Word of God. What God has said, God has said. No drunkard, no effeminate, no liar, no thief, no extortioner will enter the Kingdom of Heaven. And such were some of you. God has no identity crisis. God is not, God is not LGBT or USB or TBA. Or or, he's El Shaddai, amen. He's El Shaddai. See, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. He made them Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. God is not politically correct. Can I get an amen? He's not politically, God is not PC tolerant. God has not changed. Come on, say, there is a river. There is a river of the 
the power of God, of the flow of God, of the destiny of God. I'm not saying these things to hurt people. I'm saying these things to help people, to heal people, to set people free. If you're in a church that doesn't understand that, then what's going to happen to you? If the pastor in the pulpit is, 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 is a man-pleasing, weak need individual who doesn't believe the Word of God anymore, but is twisted and manipulated by the spirit of the age, then what's he going to preach to you? So it's a good preaching, Pastor. It's a good preaching. Come on, Titus chapter 115 says, come on, put your hand here, say, unto the pure, all things are pure. Unto those that are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure, but even their mind and their conscience is defiled. Come on, say, pure heart, pure head, pure life, pure marriage, pure money, pure church. River, river, tsunamis. Come on, everybody, go like this, go like this. Say, circumnavigate the earth. Apostolic restoration, apostolic prophetic order. Double doors, double doors. Apostolic worship, worship like never before. Apostolic money transfer. Apostolic miracles, signs and wonders. Apostolic teaching of the Word of God. Say, apostolic marriage, apostolic family, apostolic connection. Apostolic, hallelujah! Restoration. Come on, touch your name and say, rest, 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 say, touch your name and say, restore me, Lord, restore me, restore me, restore me, restore me. Oh, hallelujah. Ezekiel 47. As you lift your hands in finishing, lift your hands with me. Say, afterwards he brought me again under the door of the house, and behold, the waters were issued out from, behold, the threshold to the east. And the waters came down from under the right side to the south side of the altar. Then he brought me out of the gate to the north. Led me without unto the other gate, to the east. And the waters ran to the right side. And when that man had a line in his hand, he went and measured a thousand cubits. And he brought me to the ankles. Lift your hands. And again, he measured a thousand. And he brought me through the waters to the knees. And again, he measured a thousand. And he brought me through the waters to the loins. Hallelujah. Afterwards he measured a thousand and it was a river that no man could pass for the waters were risen. No man could pass and he said to me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? And then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Now when he had returned to the bank of the river, there were trees for the healings of the nations. Verse 8, Then he brought me into the sea and the waters shall be healed. And it shall come to pass everything that the river touches lives. Wherever the, the river goes, they shall live. And there'll be a great multitude of fish. Hallelujah. This was Ezekiel prophesying in that time. But I believe there's going to be millions of people saved in the last days. Millions of people healed in the last days. Millions of people established in the last days. In the river. But are you in it? Lift your hands and say, Father. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, release the river of God today. Release the flow of God today. Release the flow of the glory of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, everything that has hindered me, everything that stopped me emotionally, spiritually, financially, uh, even associations, I want to tell you, it, listen, not everyone is called to walk with you. Not everyone will walk with you. And listen, rejoice in those that are leaving your life, that are not part of your destiny, not part of your future. Rejoice because they were never a part of you and they were never a part of what God wants to do with you. So start rejoicing because God God is going to bring forth a river people. God is going to bring forth an anointing in the last days that's going to see blind eyes open, cripples walk, deaf ears pop open. Stadiums are going to fill up all over the earth. The greatest move of God is still to come. The greatest flow of God is still to come. And it's going to happen in our day and generation. But are you in, a, are you in that place that you are able to flow with the river of God? Able to flow with the Holy Ghost? Able to flow with the new wine? And if you aren't, you better realign. If you aren't, you better, you better make powerful decisions in your life. Because God wants you to have a new heart and a new spirit. And if you're stuck with the old, who do not want a new heart, 
do not want a new spirit. They just want church as usual or the church program. That's not what God wants. God wants to fill this earth with His glory as the waters cover the sea. God wants, God says in Habakkuk 1.5, if I told you, you wouldn't believe it. God says in Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2, in the last days, I will establish my house on the tops of the mountains. Somebody say on the tops of the mountains and the nations shall flow into it. The nations shall flow into it. The nations shall flow into it. That's a river, folks. That's a tsunami. Who wants to live for that? That means everything in your life needs radical adjustment. Everybody say radical adjustment. The, the root meaning of the word radical means to cut to the roots. To be delivered from alcoholism, you need a radical chop to the roots. To be delivered from a dead Pentecostal legalistic spirit, you need a radical cutting to the roots. To be delivered from a hard-hearted, you, you, you once had a soft heart, you need a radical cutting to the roots. Lift your hands if you need a radical cutting today. Say, Lord, I need a radical cutting off, cutting off of the past, cutting off of the roots, cutting off of the shoots, that I might have a fresh heart, a new cutting off of idolatry, cutting off of a lying spirit, cutting off of, of, of uncleanness, cutting off of, of even theology, even, even theology that hasn't produced life. There are some dangerous teachings that I won't even go into. Dangerous teachings that, some, that foolish Christians espouse forth and foolish leaders espouse forth. Keep it kingdom. Somebody say, keep it kingdom. Keep it pure. If it's not in the Word of God, if it's not, if it's not exegetically correct in the Word of God, reject it. Reject it. This is what you need to know. Lift your hands, finalizing. Lift your hands, say, the river of God is blind eyes open. Cripples walk. Devils are cast out. The gospel is preached. I live a holy life. I'm on fire for God. I pray round the clock. I give round the clock. I serve round the clock. I go to church around the clock. I honor my pastors. I don't fight with them, stand against them, abuse them, criticize them, and then try to divide the church. I don't do that. In the name of Jesus, I, I, I stand with a spirit that preaches the gospel, loves the lost, loves the sick, I, I, I love people. I live for Jesus. I turn off that television. I turn off the things of this world. And I begin to live for the glory of God because the river is flowing. The river is going. The river is moving. Ah, who wants a river? Who wants the river? Hey, who wants to get into the river? The river of God. The river of God. And right now, if you want the river, watch it on the broadcast. Come on up to the front. I'm going to finish in just a minute. River. Oh, yeah. Come on into the river. Come on into the river. Don't go up to your ankles. Don't go up to your knees. If you want the river, come on up. And I'm going to pray for you. River. River. The river of God. And lift your hands.